What's happening everyone? Daniel here, founder of the DGB Photography School based in Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, Brisbane, Auckland and New York. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the latest updates from Lightroom as of April 2018. So it's April 6, 2018. I just received these updates for Lightroom. Now, quick thing. You will only get this update if you are on the subscription program for Adobe Lightroom. If you have bought Lightroom 6 or Lightroom CC outright, then I don't think you will get these updates. As I've mentioned in my other videos, Adobe are definitely moving to moving away from the standalone version of Lightroom and moving only to support the subscription model. So um, this is something that I started advising people as of the start of this year that it you are much better off buying the subscription version of Lightroom right now. So there are three changes in this update from Lightroom. We now have the version Lightroom Classic CC version 7.3. That's what we're talking about. That's the update that came out today. And there are three things that have happened, but I'm just going to be primarily talking about one. The first thing is that Adobe have again improved the performance of Lightroom. So this is one of the things that they pretty much work on every single time they update it now. Everything's just a lot faster to move around, to go between the library module and, and the develop module, to preview presets and all that kind of jazz. You'll notice it's just a little bit snappier and that's always a nice thing to have. Um, this is not a major thing for me. Um, if you have a look in Lightroom, we, they've also moved, this is the second thing by the way, they've moved the dehaze slider from the bottom, it was under effects or something I think previously, and now they've moved it under presence right at the, the top of the global adjustments for the um, develop module. So you'll notice here dehaze, I won't talk about that in, in this particular video, um, but it's just been moved up because it's a, a more prominent thing. With Adobe, um, what they want you to do is basically have a top-down approach to how you're developing your imagery. So you'll notice as well that they've moved the profile choice right up to the top of the development options. This used to be buried right down the bottom somewhere under calibration. So a lot of you won't know what profiles actually are. I'm going to explain that really quickly and I'm going to talk about how profiles compare to presets and in order to do that, let's have a look at the profile browser that we now have access to in Lightroom. So first of all, you will notice here that we can select our profile from this little drop down menu or we can click on this little grid button here and this will open the new profile browser. Now, what? let me explain to you what profiles are and the differences between profiles and presets. So first of all, profiles only apply to raw files. So if you're shooting in JPEG mode, you don't have to worry about this, but you should not be shooting in JPEG mode. If you want to take your work to the next level, you'll hear me talk about this a lot. You've got to be shooting in raw. So you'll notice here in the profile browser that we have a host of different options for our profiles to choose to apply to our raw files. Now, let me explain how this works. So you'll notice in your digital camera, you'll have a host of different looks that you can choose in camera. Now, these are the color profiles that are particular to your camera. Every camera is different. Obviously, Nikons have pretty much the same sort of profiles that you can choose between each model, but they'll be different to Sony's and Fuji's and all that kind of stuff. And what this means is that when your camera is in JPEG mode, your camera is taking a RAW file, applying that camera profile to the RAW, developing it, giving you a final JPEG and then discarding the RAW file and then you're left with a final JPEG which has that preset profile built in. So if you like that look that your camera is producing out of camera, you can actually select that exact same look in these options here, you'll see here it has camera matching. So this, because I'm using a Nikon D750, these are the options that I can set in camera and you'll notice that when I, when I move my mouse over it, it changes the look of these images and each of these is designed to replicate what you see on the back of your LCD when you play back the image you've taken. Now what you want to do here is choose one and apply this to all of your images for the sake of consistency. What I teach at the Lightroom courses is that we want to, we want your imagery, your photographs to have one look 
that you own and you love. So don't go through all of these different camera profiles and apply a different one to every image because it's going to look like when you end up showcasing those images, it's going to look like this really bizarre hodgepodge collection of colors. Choose one and apply this consistently to all of your imagery. So you have a few choices. You can, if you really love the way that your camera develops a RAW file and gives you that JPEG look, if you love the options that you have in camera, then you can choose to choose one of those as a baseline setting. Now, what I have not mentioned is that your camera profile is literally the first thing that you do when it comes to developing your imagery. It's a baseline interpretation of the data that your CCD, your, that your digital camera is capturing. So each of these profiles is going to interpret the data in a different way and it's going to give you a different look for each of these settings. So some you'll notice when you, when you go through them that some look like they're more saturated, the colors are stronger, some will have more green, some will have more red. But this is why we just want to choose one and own that for our style. Now, once we have chosen one, then we can start applying our artistic presets on top to make further creative adjustments. So we've got our camera matching options. This is what we use to replicate the look that our camera produces out of camera. And then we have the Adobe raw options. Now this is where Adobe initially interpret the data of your camera. And this is what I like to do. I like to use the standard Adobe color to every single one of my photographs. And then I apply my presets on top. So you'll notice here that you have a monochrome interpretation. I'm going to, I'm calling it interpretation now, a, mono, a monochrome profile, Adobe color. So, so Adobe color is the default standard profile that we use. And then basically all of these other ones are just variations of that. So I just want to keep my development work as simple as possible. And I'm going to keep Adobe color as the baseline profile that I use to all of my images. Now, again, this is a very subjective process. If you don't like the results from the Adobe color profile, choose any one of these that you like, but keep in mind. So what's happened here in this particular update, and this is why people are making a big deal of it is because this Adobe color profile has not been updated in something like 10 years. So this is the first update that they've done and they've just made little tweaks to the colors and the interpretation of colors to, to make it more accurate. So once you've applied your baseline color profile, remember, this is the first thing that we do, then we can go over to our presets and we can start applying our presets. So if I close my profile browser, I'm going to apply my standard preset here and you'll notice that my preset includes the Adobe color profile. And that's because what I do is when I import my images, I apply a preset on import and I can include the default profile in the preset. So how do we do that? On my DJB preset, I just right click update with current settings and then you want to make sure that this treatment and profile is selected. And that's it. That means that whenever you import any image, if you're applying a preset on import, you're going to have that same look for every single image. So I'm going to use this particular photograph as an example here to show you that you can actually change the color profile without affecting any of the settings from the preset. So you'll notice right now that I have my standard DJB preset applied and I've made some adjustments to this image just to develop this image of increased exposure, add a bit of dehazing, clarity, etc. Now what I want to do is from underneath it, I'm just going to change the color profile and watch what happens to the look of my image. This is one that I've just chosen a modern 03 look because I like the look. It's a little bit different. Watch what happens when I select this color profile. A very different look. It's slightly more desaturated and a, and a few more red tones in there, but you'll also notice that none of my settings here have been changed. They've all stayed exactly the same. And that's because what I've done is I've changed that baseline interpretation of the data without changing the preset. Now I realize this can be quite complicated and it seems like it's a little bit of an unnecessary complication as well to your development work. But all you need to know is that this profile selection is the initial, the first thing you need to do to interpret the data from your digital camera. And from there, you want to add your preset and make your usual development adjustments.
I talk about this a lot. I talk about having a consistent look amongst your imagery. And I think this is another one of those things that requires you to be consistent in the way that you apply it. So again, we don't want to be choosing different presets and different profiles for the same selection of images. A big part of developing your style is to have consistency, have a consistent look that you like, a consistent look that you own and try and keep it that way. Obviously over time this will evolve, but we don't want to look at your images from one particular event. Let's say you're going out and you're photographing a family on the weekend and every image looks like a different interpretation of the colors. This, this kind of looks like you've had different photographers photographing the same event. So pick a style and own it. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, write a comment. I always get back to everyone and um, I'm going to be putting up some more Lightroom and photography tutorials very soon. Thanks for watching.